welcome to the Cotat workshop. Today's video uh, is finally the project that I've been talking about for a while, which is converting um, an antique piano keyboard uh, into incorporating it into a coffee table um, in oak and glass. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, it's finished and uh, it's been very satisfying. Um, and um, I hope you enjoy the video. Right then, everybody's ready. We're all on standby. Let's go to the workshop. Come on, guys, are you ready? Ready to make a start. Let's have a look. Let's get started. Come on. Yes, there we go. Now then. There we go. Yeah. We're going to make a coffee table. No, not a toffee table. A coffee table. Yeah, I know. Terrible pun. So, Neindorf, Berlin. This keyboard was second-hand, sold in Harrods in London. And some of the keys um, have come off. And this material is, of course, ivory, which um, is quite a, a mixed thing to think about where it's come from. But the elephant that donated, or elephants that donated these, um, were killed many, many, many decades ago, probably a hundred years ago. I just want to show you some of the, the intricate engineering that's gone into this in the mechanisms. Just quite beautiful. Just so intricate. And so what we want to do is make the coffee table. So have a top, a glass top, um, and have it resting on legs um, about this height. These have been cut to size. And want to make it so that somebody can still put their hands underneath and play. Okay, we've got to glue this key back on. And after a bit of research, it appears the best stuff to use is fabric glue. Um, you want something that doesn't go yellow um, and has an even finish. And literally, it's just a couple of spots. And in, and not too much pressure, but a little bit of clamping pressure. And that's it, we'll leave it. So this key here, um, we don't have the ivory cover. It was lost at the period when the piano was in the garage. So the owners have asked for something uh, a little bit special to go on to here. So we're going to try and make something out of brass. So I had to glue quite a few of these, and each one is different. You'll notice there's different distance there than there is there to there. So this is unique to this key. Also, there's a very slight lip where the sharp key um, goes past. So this here is slightly longer than here. So it was a bit of a jigsaw puzzle to get each of the ones that had come off. But this is the last one here, and then my tiniest clamp is holding down this um, one that we didn't have and we've gone for a piece of brass. So hopefully that will be all of the repairs 
and we can get on with building the frame. So we want the keys to be able to hit the surface of the coffee table. So that height, we're going to go for, okay. So it's got to be 22 centimetres. The glass was bought at Ravensby Glass in Dundee for 110 pounds or 144 US dollars. I then hand turned on the lathe the legs to the same size as the hole in the top of the glass and made four of these. Okay, so I've got the glass top and uh, the legs uh, that have been turned on the lathe and with the pre-drilled glass holes. And what I need to do now is I've done some sketches um, of how I want to build this up and I need to take some pretty precise measurements um, for building the rest of the frame. So that's what I'm going to do. Beautiful cut, really clean. Okay, so we're starting to get the bare bones of our coffee table. The next thing is to do the joinery around these supporting parts and uh, get those cut neatly. So I want to be absolutely sure I know what's going to be waste and what's going to be kept. Okay, let's talk about uh, table saw blades. Um, this one that I've been using recently has got a lot of teeth and um, is for cross cutting. If you try and do what's called ripping, you get these um, sort of burn marks. Now often you can sand or plane those out. Um, but also uh, the way the teeth are oriented, if you do cross cut but don't go all the way through, um, you don't get a completely flat profile. So I have, so I have just received delivery of a new blade, brand new blade, and it is a flat top grind. Now what that means is that the top of the blades is completely flat. So if I make multiple passes, I should get a nice smooth finish for the joinery for this project. So what I'm going to do is swap these over, put the new blade in, and um, I also want to be able to make a a shim that is the exact width of that blade. So I'll do that as well. Okay, I've got the new blade in and I'm just gonna cut two pieces of wood to the same width. So this piece that I've just cut is now the exact width of that blade. So I've been practicing with this uh, setup to try and cut the right width and I've been using that shim to compensate for the width of the blade. So this is just a piece of pine that uh, I have practiced with and the idea is that this height is the 22 centimeters that I need and the cross beams are going to fit in like so. It's quite a nice tight joint. Um, so I've got all of the sections of the legs to cut and I've uh, also started on, this is just a practice version, but I've uh, been working on the cross beams as well to get the right width. So a lot of uh, cross skid cutting 
um, but we'll crack on. So this is the first pass um, of the joinery, so I'll sort of put it together as a dry fit, and see what it might start to look like. So I'm going to fit uh, a biscuit joint into these, not so much to help with strength, more to help with um, alignment, although of course it does add to the strength a little bit. So I'm going to mark them out and then use a biscuit jointer. That's going to help me with alignment when I glue it together and clamp it together. That will then be the inside. So I've got the four corners uh, that have been biscuit jointed. I'm now ready for gluing up. So lots of gluing and drying been going on overnight. Ready to start building. So I've planed these edges down and I'm now ready to try the glass on top. So I'm just trying to check for square and starting to get the idea. So I've got these nice bits of teak left over from a couple of projects uh, that you would have seen. Um, the coffee table and uh, the Scrabble rotating holder. So what I want to do is make up uh, some wooden dowels from these um, in order to have a contrasting wood to go with the oak. So I've drilled part of the way through with the spade bit until there's just a tiny hole on this side. And then I'm going to drill through from what will be the viewing side. It gives a nice clean hole. And then these are my dowel that I've made so they'll be ready to go in this way. So I've rounded these off and uh, just finishing off the glue there and starting to sand. What do you think, Toff? Yeah? Full inspection? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, I sanded everything, um, all surfaces, and then using some just homemade shellac, as in home dissolved shellac as a sort of sealer. Then I gave it a coat of uh, Osmo high wax oil, uh, just the clear gloss. Um, and now I'm going to put on some Gilboy's uh, Pure Gold, which um, is for the lighter woods. I was tempted to go with the rose, but um, I actually want a completely natural, um, lighter oak look to match 
the um, uh, base that's going to come in. So um, wire wool for naught, cover in wax, leave for 20 minutes, buff it up and then we'll be able to put the rest of the pieces together. Oh, and before I did that, I went over it with, this is 1500 grit, um, but just very light uh, sanding, taking any of the final sort of nits off, um, but it's really smooth and uh, just ready for a coat of wax. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes and I've uh, got a nice soft cloth and I'm going to give this a good buff. There we are, that's uh, all buffed up nicely. Uh, this Gilboys is great stuff. Um, and if you would like to get some, uh, go to their website and use the promotional code COTAC15 and you'll get 15% off care of watching this video. Uh, so thanks very much uh, to Gilboys for that offer. Um, and uh, let's get on with uh, finishing this now. Okay, what I want to do now is put the keyboard onto this base and uh, I've drilled four holes in the cross beams and I need to drill up underneath. Now, on my bench, there's not going to be enough room to be able to drill up. So what I'm gonna do is stretch it from this bench to this bench. And when I built this workshop, I built the bench and also this side uh, bench as well, which is usually used for storing things or the drill press. Um, but I made them so that they would be the same height and level. Uh, so what I can do is stretch this frame across both and then I'll be able to get underneath to do the final fitting. Okay, it's time for the big reveal. So there it is, a keyboard made into a coffee table.